Hi, in this lecture video, I will discuss electron stability, which is one of the most important chemical foundation that anyone learning chemistry need to understand in order to be the chemical reaction. And the reason why is because chemical reaction are driven by the instability of the electron. So this system would then try to find a way to stabilize an electron by rearranging them. And as electrons are rearranged, chemical reactions are taking place. And the more unstable the electrons are, the more reactive the system will be. So we can see that chemical reactions are driven by the instability of electron, and thus it's important that we are able to determine electron stability. And in this video, I will discuss four qualitative tools that we can use to determine electron stability. And the first one is something we call atom. So basically, which atom do the electron locate on? So electrons located in different atoms have different stability to them. And second is something that we call the resonant effects. Do the system that we are interested in, in can it form resonant or not? That can also affect its stability. And the third one, the inductive effects or induction. And the third one, the orbital effect. So which orbital do the electron, electron locate in that have different stability as well? And these four factors right here are also collectively known as aerial. So we can remember this. And the order of importance is actually listed in here. Atoms, a factor, is actually more important than resonant, and then induction, and then orbital. So now, Let's discuss this first factor right here, the atom. Which atoms are the electron locate on? So here is the first one, when it regards to atom. A negative charge on the more electron negative atom is basically more stable. And the reason why this is true is because the very definition of electronegativity is basically the love for electrons. So the more electronegative the atom is, the more electron loving it will be. And therefore, electron located on the more electronegative are more stable because the atom is happy with that electron. And if we were to now look at the trends in electronegativity, so we can see that here are all of the elements that concern us here in organic chemistry. And we can see that the trend in electronegativity is that it is increasing going from left to right. And it also increasing from bottom to top. So fluorine would be the most electronegative atom. And the electron on the fluorine would be more stable compared to any other atom with regard to electronegativity. And here is an example right here. So we have this four molecule right here. So which of this have the most stable electron? So here in this case, we have electron on carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So quite easy for us to see that in this case right here, fluorine would then be the most electronegative atom. And that's why electron on this fluorine right here would then be more stable. It means more stable is equivalent to saying less reactive. And carbon will then be the least stable with the electron. So the trend would work out in the order of electronegativity. And second, B, the power of char on the less electronegative atom is more stable. And this has the very same meaning compared to the statement A. So the negative char on more electronegative atom is more stable. So we would then want to have a power of char on the less electronegative atom. So they basically have the same meaning to them. And again, the reason why this is true is because the more electronegative atom would actually prefer to have 
negative charge or have electron on it, not the opposite. So that basically makes that the positive charge on the less electronegative more stable. For an example, here in this case right here, we have a positive charge on the nitrogen and the oxygen. So in this case right here, we get nitrogen basically have lower electronegativity compared to oxygen. So that basically make the power of char on the nitrogen more stable. So oxygen is more electronegative compared to nitrogen. So that means it prefer the negative char, but not the power of char. So that's why this is less stable. And the third point with regard to size. A lone pair electron on the more electronegative atom is less reactive. So lone pair on the more electronegative atom is less reactive. Why is that the case? So basically, again, the very definition of electronegativity is the love for electron. So if we were to have electron on the more electronegative atom, then that means that that atom right there really loved that electron. So it's not going to donate that electron and have those electrons participate in chemical reaction. So basically we see that the more electronegative the atom is, basically mean more, the more electron loving that atom would be. So therefore it is then less willing to donate the electron and participate in chemical reaction. So for an example, here we have lone pair of electron on this various atom right here. And we can see that the electronegativity of nitrogen is 3.0, and for oxygen, this is 3.5, and for sulfur, this is 2.5. Because sulfur have the lowest electronegativity out of all of this. This basically means that the sulfur is more willing to donate electron, and that's why this will then be more reactive. And this would then be the this the oxygen would then be the this reactor. And the fourth point regarding size or atoms. Electron located on the larger atom are more stable. And the reason why is because larger atom have more space to spread out the charge and that reduce the electron density on the atom and therefore reducing its chemical reactivity. So we have seen already that the more dense or the more build up of electron that occur in a particular atom, then the more reactive that atom would be versus the more evenly distributed uh, the electron would be or the less the, the less the electron density, the less the reactive that atom would be. Okay, and here in this case right here, then we can see that when it comes down to the trend in size, the size is basically increasing in this way. So it basically will be uh, increasing going from right to left. And please do not get confused with the trend in atomic size versus in atomic mass. The trend in the atomic mass, it is basically will be increasing go from left to right. But now when it comes down to size, this is actually bigger, carbon is bigger compared to fluorine. So therefore the trend in size increasing in this way. And the trend in size, atomic size, would also be increasing going from top to bottom. So elements on the bottom are bigger since so they have more principal shell to them. And now let's try an example between OH and SH. Which of this have the better or more stable electron? So here in this case right here, we can then see that oxygen and sulfur locate on different row. When they locate on the different row or different period on the periodic table, then that means the size in them, the size different in them are significant. So in this case right here, sulfur is basically significantly bigger than oxygen. And because sulfur is then bigger than oxygen, the electron on the sofa would then be more diffuse or not as dense compared to the oxygen. So in this case right here, 
this would then be more stable. This would then be more reactive or less stable. One important thing to take notice is the following. For element on the same period, the psi difference is not as significant as the electronegativity difference. So although carbon is bigger than nitrogen, but then it is only slightly bigger than nitrogen. But the electronegative of nitrogen, now this is 3.0 and this is 2 carbon 2.5. So that difference in electronegativity is significant. And that point is important because of the following. A lot of time, size and electronegativity may contradict each other. So the size, in fact, that may, stay, may favor one molecule, but electronegativity may favor the other one. And whenever that happens, then now we have to analyze, analyze this very carefully. And a lot of time, electronegativity would win if we were to compare elements that are on the same period. For an example, in this case right here, we have a lone pair of electron on a nitrogen and lone pair of electron on oxygen. So between this, which one would then be more stable? Let's now analyze size effects and then electronegativity effects. So when it comes down to size, nitrogen is basically bigger than oxygen. And because this is bigger, the electron along the lone pair of electron on the nitrogen would then be more diffuse and that basically makes this less reactive. Let's now compare electronegativity, the effects of electronegativity. So in this case right here, because nitrogen is less electronegative compared to oxygen, the electronegativity of nitrogen is 3.0 versus oxygen is 3.5. So nitrogen is much less electronegative than oxygen. That basically means that the nitrogen would then be more willing to donate its lone pair of electrons. And that makes this lone pair of electron right here more reactive. So basically, when it comes down to electronegativity, electronegativity favors the nitrogen, and basically saying that this would then be more reactive. So this is an example of us seeing that size and electronegativity are having different effects on these two molecules. And whenever that happens, electronegativity would win especially when we have elements that exist on the same period. Because the size effects is again not as significant compared to the difference in electronegativity. And now let's put all of this together and work on this example to make sure that we have understood uh, this. So rank the following set of electron in decreasing electron stability. And here we are given this seven different species right here. Now let's see which of them would then be more stable. And the first thing that we want to do is first take a quick look at all of them. And then we can see that we have species with negative charge on them. And we also have species that are neutral, like this two last molecule right here. So once we see that, it should immediately make sense to us that species that are neutral would then be more stable compared to species that are negatively charged. And the reason why is that species with negatively charge, the negative charge tell us that they're very dense in electron. And the denser they are in electron, then the more reactive they will be. So therefore, the most stable electron system will then occur between these two neutral molecules. And between these two neutral molecules right here, let's now decide which one would then be more stable. So we have lone pair on the nitrogen and we have a lone pair on the oxygen. And now we can see in when it comes down to size, oxygen and nitrogen, although they are different in size, but the size is not as important compared to the difference in electronegativity. Because nitrogen is much less electronegative compared to oxygen as we previously have seen, then that makes the lone pair on the nitrogen more reactive. So therefore, this would then be more stable then. So oxygen, lone pair of oxygen would then be more stable. 
and this will then come second. And now we have this five different species right here that are all negative. So how do we rank which one would then be more stable? So let's see, we have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, iodine. So the first four elements, this all of this element species right here, they are on the same period in the periodic table, meaning the size are somewhat the same or, um, or they are different in size, but uh, it's not as significant. Now we have iodine and iodine is all the way on the fourth period or the fifth period. So this basically means that the size of iodine is much significantly bigger than any of the other elements that we've seen above here. And because this has bigger size right here, it has more room to distribute its electron and making the electron on the iodine more diffuse or not as dense. And therefore this would then be more stable. So this would then be the third one. And now looking at all of this, we now have all of this element right here that exists on the same row and they're all negative. And at this point right here, we should be looking at the difference in electronegativity, but not inside. And we can see that fluorine is more electronegative. So have a negative char on the more electronegative atom would make that electron more stable. So again, the more electronegative the atom is, the more loving it is with the electron. So this would then be more stable and then followed by this one, and then followed by the nitrogen, and lastly, the carbon.